A Landform's Adventure, written by Rose Brooker. Road Trip I just found out that I'm going on a road trip this summer. My parents and I are going all the way from Boston to Seattle. My class is studying landforms in school. Mom says we're going to see some amazing landforms along the way. In class, my teacher, Mr. Lopez, explained that Earth has layers like a hard-boiled egg. Both have a shell that's thin and hard. Earth's crust is broken in pieces, like a cracked eggshell. Earth's mantle is like the white of the egg. Earth's core is in the center, like the egg yolk. We also learned that Earth's crust is made up of huge pieces of rock called tectonic plates. The plates sit above soft, almost melted rock and slowly slide around because of heat deep inside Earth. These movements are the most important underground forces that create landforms. Try this. Look at a United States map that shows all the interstate highways. Notice that the main east-west routes have even numbers, I-90, I-80, I-70, and so on. And the main north-south routes have odd numbers, I-5, I-15, I-25, and so on. Choose an interstate other than I-90 and research its main landforms. Then, write a story about a trip along that interstate. Mr. Lopez also explained that Earth's surface is always changing. He said that some changes take place slowly, while others happen really fast. Both types can change existing landforms and create new ones. Some Sometimes small areas high in the mantle get hot enough to melt and become magma. This melted rock can push up and erupt at the surface as lava. As lava cools and hardens, it can build up and form a volcano, which is a type of mountain. As tectonic plates and magma change Earth under the ground, other things are happening on the surface. Weathering breaks down rock 
and shapes it. Erosion carries away the pieces that have broken off, called sediments, and later deposits them. Wind, water, and ice are the main tools of weathering and erosion. Mr. Lopez handed out a list of different landforms. I'm going to take the list on my trip and try to see them all. Getting Ready to Leave Mr. Lopez's list includes some landforms here in Boston. Mom and I start at Castle Island in Boston Harbor. It's not really an island, since it's not surrounded by water on all sides. It's connected to the mainland on one side, which makes it a peninsula. You can see a bunch of islands from there, though. Boston Harbor is part of Massachusetts Bay, an area of water connected to the Atlantic Ocean. Boston is on the east coast of the North American continent, an incredibly huge piece of land. On the Road Once we start driving west, the hills and valleys grow larger, and we seem to be climbing higher. Dad says we'll soon be in some mountains, but I don't see any tall mountains. Dad explains that because the mountains are very old, erosion has worn them down to big hills. Across New York State, the land is low and hilly in some places and higher in other places. Dad says the higher places are part of a huge, high area of land called a plateau. The high land built up over time from sediments deposited as a result of erosion. Do you know? The largest plateau in North America is the Colorado Plateau, which is in parts of Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico. After stopping overnight, we continue west. The land is much lower and flatter as we drive along the south shore of Lake Erie. Lake Erie is one of the Great Lakes. A glacier carved the Great Lakes about 14,000 years ago. They're Earth's largest group of freshwater lakes. Mom says we'll see another one of the Great Lakes, Lake Michigan, when we get near Chicago. We stay overnight in Chicago and then get back on the road. After entering Wisconsin, we drive past the capital city of Madison. Downtown Madison sits on an isthmus, a narrow strip of land between two bodies of water. I grin and check it off my list. After driving for a while, we stop to see the Wisconsin Dells. The Dells is a gorge, a steep, narrow valley that was carved by the Wisconsin River. Along its sides are canyons which are similar to gorges, but not as steep or narrow. Now it won't be long until we see the Mississippi River, one of the longest rivers in the world. This part of the Mississippi was mainly carved by glaciers. We just crossed the Mississippi. Soon, we'll officially be in the Great Plains. I learned in school that a plain is a large, flat area without many trees. The Great Plains formed when two tectonic plates smashed into each other and joined together. 
Some parts of the Great Plains are flat, and others have hills. We stop overnight in western Minnesota and drive into South Dakota the next morning. It's pretty flat until we get near Badlands National Park. We hike in the park and see some amazing rock formations. After an overnight stay, we drive through a corner of Wyoming and pass the Bighorn Mountains on our left. Some of the mountains have snow, but Mom says even bigger mountains are still to come. After we cross into Montana and pass Billings, Dad says, Get ready to be impressed. Soon afterward, I let out a whoop as I see a row of high, snowy peaks, the Rocky Mountains. The Rockies are one of the main mountain ranges in the West. They formed when two small tectonic plates beneath the Pacific Ocean slid under the North American plate. After driving across Montana, Idaho, and Washington, I'm excited to see water again. But I'm more excited to see Mount Rainier, a huge volcano. We drive into Seattle, which is next to Puget Sound, an arm or inlet of the Pacific Ocean. We've reached the end of Interstate 90, and our search for landforms is nearly over. One Landform to Go For the last landform on my list, we travel one hour north to the Skagit River Delta. This landform was created when sediments built up where the river flows into Skagit Bay. I've seen some amazing landforms on this trip, and I've learned so much about how Earth's surface changes. I can't wait to tell Mr. Lopez about my summer vacation.